Oh, boy. Sakes alive. Look at that. Did you ever think of a locomotive as lazy? Does sound mighty strange. But as a matter of fact, nothing in this world likes to get going. All things are lazy. The way some of us are when it comes to getting up in the morning. And things would always stay still unless put into motion by some outside force. How fast things get going depends on the force behind them and how heavy they are. A bullet is light and the power behind it is great, so it gets going fast. But take a baseball. It's many times heavier, and no pitcher's arm has the force of gunpowder, so it doesn't get going nearly so fast. The bigger the object, the slower its getaway. It's that way with everything. Scientists have a name for this thing that slows up getaway. They call it inertia, which is simply a heavy name for the tendency things have to stay where they are. Sir Isaac Newton figured all that out a long time ago, so that leaves us free to see for ourselves what it all means. The four boys sitting on the sled are weight. The one behind supplies the power. Why isn't there any acceleration? There's too much weight and not enough power. Hey there, help a fella push, will you? Now we've decreased weight and increased power, and we have acceleration. Once we're in motion, we don't have to worry. We've knocked out old man inertia, and everything is okay. If we want to go still faster, we'll have to increase power or cut out weight all over again. With automobiles, it's the same. You have to increase the power to get acceleration, or else take out weight. Let's say a man is building a car. He wants to have unusual acceleration. He decides to make the engine more powerful, but he soon finds out that he has a car like some little racing planes. They have too much engine for the plane, so they will get going fast. But they pay for the acceleration when they get it that way. Too much extra power takes too much gasoline. Automobile racers have another way to increase power. They make the engine run faster. This gives better acceleration and it doesn't take a lot of gas. But because of the wear and tear from running the engine so fast, the engine of a racing car has to be overhauled after every event. To get acceleration this way, an automobile designer must sacrifice a very important thing, durability. Maybe he'll try reducing the weight of the car. Now, to cut down the weight, he has to take out a lot of things. He has to take out some of the weight that was carefully built into the axle. He has to sacrifice the extra reinforcement that was put into the frame. Take weight out of the transmission. He has to go without necessary weight in the body and the springs and a lot of other things. And when he's all done, he just hasn't got as much automobile. Such a car might have getaway like a motorcycle, but it would be light too like a motorcycle. And it wouldn't have the comfort, quietness roadability and smoothness everyone wants. Then too, a fast start at one corner often means a quick stop at the next. These are the problems of power, weight and speed which have to be worked out. No matter how you use your car, on country roads or on city streets, 
You want to get going. You want getaway, balanced with weight for comfort, durability, and safety. You want good acceleration, balanced with smoothness and economy. When weight and power are properly balanced, an automobile will get going fast under the toughest conditions that can be found. It's a well-known fact that no car has ever before climbed this hill, a breathtaking grade in the San Fernando Valley region used exclusively for motorcycle stunts. It's a stiff test of power for any car to make it with a running start and a real job of acceleration to climb it from a standing start. So here goes. It takes steering control to keep that course. It takes weight and plenty of it to keep those wheels from slipping. It takes power and weight and real acceleration to pull over the top. But the proper balance gives us more performance than we'll ever need, plus real safety. 